Did somebody say Squeaky Wagon Productions? Welcome to Cooking the Casbah. My name is Sabi. I bring you the Mediterranean right here downtown Madison. Today we're making cookies. They were made famous by this monster that screamed around and yelled cookies and never ate any of it because I saw it flying all over its face. Today we're making Middle Eastern Mediterranean cookies and of course coffee to boot. So stay tuned. Our children, we have so many hopes for them, but we don't always have the answers. Through the Agenda for Change, United Way is helping parents turn their hopes for their children into reality. By supporting parents, United Way knows more children will grow up feeling that they are full of promise, are safe, are loved. United Way of Dane County is creating real solutions for our children and our community, and that's what matters. To find out more, visit www.unitedwaydanecounty.org. You are watching a Squeaky Wagon production, and you like it. My name is Sabi. I have traveled the world, near and far, in search of exciting foods. Come with me on an epic journey of culinary adventures, right here on Cooking the Casbah. Welcome back. Once again, we're cooking the Casbah, right here, downtown Madison. And today we're making cookies. Of course, the cookie monster, cookies, just shoved them in his mouth. They went all over the place. I bet you anything, when we're done with these cookies, even the cookie monster is going to eat them straight up. The ma'mool, that's what they're called, are form a type of cookie that is stuffed. They're either stuffed with dates or some kind of a nut. Today, I chose pistachios. But before we start with the stuffing, we must talk about the outside. And the skin is made this way. I have some semolina here, a couple of cups of semolina, one cup of flowers, flour, not flowers that you buy from someone. And the reason why I sieve them is to break down any lumps, chunks, anything like that. I also do the same thing with the salt and the sugar. If there's anything chunky. Now the best thing to do is to mix the ingredients dry all together. While this is mixing, on this side I have some warm water and some yeast. I'm going to add that to it and give it a little stir with my finger. And a hint of milk, which I will use later on. But for now, the dry ingredients get mixed up completely. And I add the butter. There's about a cup of butter here. And this is a hands-on food. You really have to make by hand. I want to make sure that the, all the granules of the semolina and the flour are coated with the butter. Music. La, 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 la. Now that the butter is fully absorbed by the ingredients, we add the rest of the wet product, the uh, water and yeast, and the milk. And this is where blending comes in. And if you have a fancy blender, use it. We don't. It looks pretty consistent, right? So when the dough is fully mixed, like that, and it's somewhat, it should still be a little crumbly, but yet, squeeze it right through. If that makes any sense. Did it? Good. Put it right here, right of this bowl. Now, what I'd like to do eventually is have equal amounts. So one way you can do it is by spreading the dough like that, and then cutting equal pieces the stuff later. So if you cut even amounts, you have that continuity. 
Or if you have one of these fancy little ballers, you can put some in there and that will guarantee that everyone should be the same size. I want them to be all the same size because that would determine, it determines the, uh, the product inside, how much stuffing I have inside. Now that the dough is made and ready to receive the stuffing, we're gonna take a break. When we come back, I'll show you how to make the stuffing. A lot of things to like about the co-op that we shop here every week. I love the salad bar. It's always fresh and something good to eat. There are things in the deli that you won't find anywhere else. You can get anything here if they don't have it. You ask, they'll get it. It's shopping with my um, son. He uh, he enjoys like loading up the bulk foods into the bags. Although we do sp spill a few items on the floor, but the selection is really good. It's a lot of things to like about the co-op. It feels really like a part of the community that I want to support. We are back. You missed a very interesting segment while we were on break. I was debating whether this is enough to show for a whole show on one cookie. And I said to Matt, who is my ultimate critic, these are not your basic cookies. These are stuffed cookies. Is that right? And we're also joined today by my mother, who is my, one of my critics, because she always makes sure that I am online and on track, whatever I do. So uh, I remember as a child, she would not let me eat the stuff raw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, raw dough is so tasty. <laughs> I'm a little older now and wiser, and it doesn't taste that good. <laughs> Something about it when we were children, I thought that this was the coolest flavor ever. But don't eat this plain. Speaking of not eating it plain, I'm going to give you something to put in it. One of the many things they use in Syria and Saudi Arabia are the dates. The date stuffing is consistent, consisting of uh, crushed dates. Before they get to this shape, or this shape right here, I'm going to show all three. This is a whole date. There's a pit inside, and the pit has to be removed. And you can slowly heat this with a little bit of water to make it look like that. This is what you'd find in the stores. This is great as a garnish. It's sugar-coated sun-dried. So we're going to avoid this today, and this is definitely too much work. So in some specialty stores, you'll find something that looks like that, which is just pitted dates. They say pitted, but I uh, beg to differ, because often I find in here pits or something else, some kind of a skin. So what I do is, in a bowl, break it down, just like that, and then find these pesky seeds and fish them out. Once they're out, I add a little bit of orange blossom water. What is this, someone might ask? It is just that, the water of the orange blossom. And it's cooked up and distilled, and that's what they collect. And it's quite floral, so if you like perfume, <laughs> put some on yourself. I'm going to pass this around. Take a woof. Smell it. That should wake you up. <laughs> Don't drink any. <laughs> And then back, back to here, uh, uh, what we were talking about here before. Oh, this yeah. is nutmeg, fresh round nutmeg on the dates, like that, about a quarter of a nutmeg. Cinnamon, you can also use ground cinnamon the same way. Now this product is ready to mix. Now we flavored it with the floral and the nutmeg and cinnamon, and it gets all mixed in. This does not need any sugar. Just like that. Now, in order to assist in putting it inside that dough, I'll cut it into little balls that look like this. And this is an example of one. I cheated. <laughs> I made some of these in advance. So that's flavorful. 
It's a little floral. I'll leave that here. Now, on the other side of this spectrum, in other places around the Mediterranean and the Middle East, the nut variety. If there is a walnut, they use cinnamon. In this case, we're using pistachios. Pistachios, man's best friend after dogs. They come in this form. This is the kind you find in the store with the skin on it, and it's salted and roasted. Don't stick those in the cookie. Uh, you'll find the raw shelled variety, which looks like this. And in a food processor, I chop it and make it look like this. The easiest thing to do in this case is add some sugar, confection sugar or powdered sugar. I add more of this floral stuff. And in this case, we're only putting the cinnamon. And that gets mixed up. Like that, if it's a little too dry, I'll add more of my floury stuff. And this you could literally eat like this. It's sweet, it's nutty, and it's floral. So, now that the stuffing is done, should we move on? Do we have enough time to run through this? We're going to finish it up. I'll show you how it's done. Remember those balls we made? Now, with a finger, you make just enough room for one of those balls of dates. And it sits just like that. Mom knows how to do that. <laughs> she showed me how to do that. I'm showing her now. This is how it's done, Mom. <laughs> and I set it aside. It sits aside for a little bit. We need to decide what mold to use before we go anywhere. If you see here, this is a, an oval shaped one. Usually nuts are used in, in that shaper. These cookie shapers help identify the content of the cookie. In some places, you'll see that the flat round one gets the dates, so I'll do that here. And it's simply pushing it through like that. And I know the sound guys love this. There is one cookie. Right? And we'll put them on a pan so we can bake them. I'll put that right here. That's one. Now we'll use this shape for the, the nut variety. And in the same way, same method, I simply make this little hole in it. Remember the Kibbe episode? Those of you who have been keeping track of the show, the Kibbe episode, we made Kibbe similar method, but that was a savory food. And then here, in the middle, I put the nuts. Carefully. If it doesn't fit, I keep working it until it fits. If you need, you can have a little bit of water on the side to keep your hands moist, or a little bit of oil also works. And with this, this one right here, if you like this shape, we'll use the long shape. Okay. Just like that, I press it in. Uh, these are prehistoric. I think I've, um, I've had this for at least 20 years. <laughs> and we had to borrow more from mom. Mom showed me the, <laughs> showed me the, the other variety. There's always a collection of cookie or mamul shapers in everybody's house. Sound? Down on the sound? See this shape? Now this will have the pistachios in it, and this will have the dates in it. We're going to make more of these and bake them. When we come back, we'll finish them up and make Middle Eastern coffee to go with the fabulous cookies. I didn't want to say anything. 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 Bam bam, sedai bombaran shabane khane ha. Ki bo bolch stabiniyat. Bolch niyat. Наша семья боялась преследования по политическим убеждениям.
Mi papá no es el mismo. No desde la guerra. The Co-op rocks. If you want good food, if you want something that's actually healthy and nutritious, carrots that actually still have a little bit of iron in them, things like that, this is the place to go. Period. Welcome back. Once again, we're cooking our way around the Mediterranean on Cooking the Kasbah. My name is Sabi, and I'm joined by fabulous people, including my mother, who's in the audience. And she always put us, uh, set me straight on whenever I deviate from the traditional recipes. So I'm glad that she's here today to show us how it's done. And she has been giving me nota notations here on the side with little remarks and comments. Um, the ma'mool is what we made, cookies from Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, are baked for 20 minutes at 400 degrees and this is what they look like when they come out before baking I put a little hole in them to prevent them from exploding and this one has the dates in it the bottom should look pretty much like this and the top is a pale gold color like that the uh, ones with the pistachios we will distinguish by doing sugar on top and this is the kind of cookie that you will receive when you go visit people during the two major feasts around the Muslim world. The particular one is after the month of Ramadan when everybody's fasting for a month, sunrise to sunset, and then at the Eid, the event at the end. Every house you walk into, you're most likely receiving some of these cookies or a variation of them. These cookies are best served with Middle Eastern coffee. You'll find it in Turkish cuisine and Greek cuisine. It's the coffee that is cooked in the water. Unlike the Greeks and the Turks in the Arabic world, they use cardamom. Cardamom looks like this, as a whole pod. Can you show this? And the seed that comes out from inside is this stuff right here. And then it's ground up. You can grind it fresh. If you go to your coffee supplier down the street, maybe Java Bay, they'll grind up coffee, what they call Turkish ground, which is powder, pulverized, just like this. And that has in it the ground up cardamom. And this coffee is ground up just for us here at Cooking the Casbah. Uh, before any accidents happen here, water is starting to boil. I add the sugar. This is the eventual size of the coffee serving. I added about six water, six cubes of sugar, and we stir, reduce the heat, or turn it off completely. This way it won't foam up and make a mess. And this gets all the coffee that stays in the coffee. You've seen this. Yes, I have. You've made that in my house. This is, this is wake up juice for us here yeah. most, of the, most of the time when we show up to work. This would be traditional breakfast for the chefs here at the Casbah. And do you see why I turned the heat off? Because I knew it was going to do its trick. And with that, we'll let this sit and rest for a little bit. And how about some cookies to eat? We tried to make enough for the crew behind the scenes. Cafea Arabica is the name of the bean. That was a scientific name. Did you know that the West thought of the coffee beans as a poisonous plant for years? And then in the Southern Arabian Peninsula, in an area modern day, Yemen, they cultivated it and used it for a beverage that gave them the itch or the energy. And this is why coffee has Cafe Arabica as a name. Um, this uh, coffee, the recipe that I shared with you, is very traditional in the Arabic world, um, but it's definitely enjoyed everywhere around the world. And this small amount, very strong, that's why we only serve about this much of it. And we're going to enjoy some of this coffee. And then at the end of the um, the coffee drinking ceremony. Usually in a social gathering, a bunch of ladies sit around and they read each other's fortune based on the shape that the coffee grounds leave on the bottom. And I'll show you after, after John is done with his coffee, I'll show you what that bottom means. <laughs> I'll read his fortune. But until then, we're going to serve up some more.
So after the, um, this is the Middle Eastern coffee with the grounds that are on the bottom. After one is done enjoying their coffee, they swirl the coffee grounds that are on the very bottom, around the cup, in such matter, manner, in such a way, and it's tipped. After a few minutes of drying, the coffee grounds will look something like that. And an expert will look at these shapes based on what it is, whether it's positive or negative, shape-wise. They can tell you your future. And if you buy that, I have a bridge for sale. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on another episode of Cooking the Casbah. My name is Sabi. I take you on a culinary journey around the Mediterranean, right here downtown Madison. I hope you enjoyed our cookies episode. Thank you. I'll tell you the scenario with this, the coffee. Yeah. They, my mother and some of her best friends, would sit around and drink coffee and chit chat. It's more of a social thing. And then they already know each other's stories anyway. So they know that, you know, my sister is, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. She'll, she'll read the cup for her friends, but they know each other. So they know what's going on in each other. It's not like a revelation. Yeah, it is part of the social makeup of the event. Lots of small tips. Now, squeaky wiggle.